I remember when I just got baptized, me and my wife was chit-chatting. And I was telling us some stuff we used to do when we were kids growing up, and she was telling me the same. And then out of the blue, she told me, I can tell you a beautiful story, something that my parents told me. And she said, there was a couple that got married, and they had a beautiful son. At the age of five, he was taken. My wife was originally from Colombia. The couple were living in Bogota. Bogota is the capital of Colombia. That's, that, that city is built on a mountain top. It's very beautiful. After five years, the couple decided to move away from, Colomb from Bogota and they moved to Medellin, there where my, my in-laws then resided. And one day, after five years gone by, the, the little boy was five years old, for ten years old by now, and um, the, the guy that took him, what, what they used to do back then, maybe they still do it, I don't know, maybe they still. They used to kidnap kids and disable them, disfigure them, amputate them just so that they can put them out there to, to beg so that they can make a living off of that. Unfortunately, this, this young couple, after they moved from Bogota to Medellin, they were going to the movies one afternoon, one evening, and they saw the little boy, because he had no feet, the, the guy cut his feet out, and he was there begging. And as the, the parents were passing by, the mother stopped to drop some change in the bowl. You know, when you, when you are an adult, your feet you don't change much. But when you are a child at the, five, at the age of five, your feet is, after five years, your feet change changed a bit. And the, the little boy recognized his father and his mother. And as she dropped the, the, the us, she dropped the money into the bowl and she was walking off. My wife told me that her, her father told them that the boy apparently got dumb, he couldn't talk. And as the, the mother and father was walking out and they reached a distance and the boy realized that, that this is his parents and he couldn't say anything. Out of the blues he shouted out. He said, Mama! It's me, Ricardo! The parents turned back, and when they looked, and they really looked at the boy, they really saw that that was their son. My topic is entitled, One of the Greatest Family Reunion Ever Take Place on Planet Earth. <coughs> I want you all to pray for me. I need that. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I can't do this, Lord. But I know you can. May we come face to face with you today. May we see who you really are. May we see who we really are. And help us, dear God, as we come face to face with you. We will try by your grace, by your strength and your power, to emulate you. You must be like us in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I'm a very emotional guy. That's, I don't know if that's something bad or good. <laughs> the Bible tells us that to understand this message, we have to we have to go back from the beginning. <coughs> Jacob and Esau.
these two young men came from a, a very, very, very wealthy family. A family that was chosen by God. They had privileges that other, other family never had. They were being protected by God continually. One of them was a great hunter. The Bible talked about two great hunters. That was Nimrod and, and Esau. I don't know who was the best. <laughs> but I will choose Esau. <laughs> These two brothers began to fight even in the womb of the mother. One day, when Rebecca was pregnant with them, she couldn't understand the, the constant kicking and, and struggling and fighting within her womb. And, and she said, you know what? I'm going to go and talk to God about this. And she went and talked to the Lord, and the Lord told her that she has two nations in her. And they are fighting, they are struggling. The elder will serve the younger. That was a promise God had given to Rebecca and Isaac. So they were not ignorant who would be in charge, who would inherit the birthright of the family. To understand what the birthright is, the birthright is the opportunity and the privilege and the great honor to lead out the principle and the tradition and policy and the religious teachings of the family. Yeah. They, were to, they were to receive two thirds of the family inheritance, not for themselves in particular, but in fact that if any other member in the family, it was like a commune. If any of the members in the family were in distress financially, or destitute and couldn't afford things, the, the, the one that inherited the boat ride would step in and provide for that family. They were to instruct and direct the family to the path of righteousness, the way of God, the way of Yahweh. Yeah. <coughs> Here it is as the brothers of them grew and become adults. The Bible tells us that Esau was a great hunter. His father loved Esau. Why fathers love children, love especially sons that are very athletic, very, very physical, very... They're all going, why? Remind them of who he was, maybe. On the other hand, Jacob was a very quiet, easygoing person. He was a mama boy. I have a mama boy. <laughs> My daughter is a papa boy. <laughs> you know, in growing up, <laughs> in growing up, she could have ride a bicycle without holding the handle. A lot of the boys in the neighborhood, because her brothers had a lot of friends, and, uh, and they were boys, and she with them. And among them, she would ride her bicycle with them, and they could not have done that. <laughs> Coming back to the topic, brothers and sisters, Rebecca taught Jacob just about everything a mother would teach a girl to do in the home. <laughs> Jacob was a good cook. Maybe not good as I am, but he was a good cook. No wonder why, when, Je when Esau came that day from hunting, he was so hungry and tired. To understand, to understand the value of one birthright is to understand who you really are and where you give your priority as a human being. What is important to you in this life? And here it is. You know, Jacob, Abraham was a very wealthy man. Very, very wealthy. I, I'm not going to go into all the text because this is, this is going to be kind of lengthy. But Abraham was very wealthy. He had a lot of servants, maids, and, and a lot of animals by the hundreds, by the thousands. One day, Lot was being taken 
And Abraham ran up all the young men that were born in his commune were 300 and change. Yes. So he was very wealthy. Everything was passed on to Isaac. Everything was passed on to Isaac. His animals, his, his slaves and everything. It's not, that, it's not that Esau could not get food elsewhere. He could have. There was always food in the... It was like a village. It was like a village. But Jacob loved his brother cooking. He loved it. And here it is. His brother woke out to deal with him. You know, both of them knew... Both of them knew who the boat ride belongs to. Both of them knew. Esau knew it was, it was the, the right of Jacob. Traditions and custom states that the firstborn would have the right. Yeah. But if the firstborn neglect to uphold the principle and the policy and tradition of the family, it can be sent to the one that upholds it. Amen. Because Isaac loved Esau and the mother loved Jacob, <laughs> here it is. After he sold his boat ride, he didn't feel any remorse, he didn't feel anything. No guilt, nothing. He walked away as though nothing happened. Can you imagine that? The, the, Bible, the Bible tells us as time went on, as time went on, Jacob, Isaac was getting old. His sight was going. He couldn't see as good as when he was younger. He called Esau one day and said, Esau, listen, I need to bless you. Because you will be the one responsible for carrying out the traditions of the family. And here it is. The mother overheard that. And she called Jacob. She said, Jacob, listen, your father is going to bless your brother. He's going to have the right to the boat right. God already told them that the boat ride will belong to Jacob, not Isaac, and, and, and not Esau. Esau will serve him rather than Jacob serving Esau. But you know, brothers and sisters, when we don't trust God, we put ourselves in a dilemma. We put ourselves in a compromising situation. We put ourselves in problems. We create problems for ourselves. We create problems. The mother insinuates in Jacob what he should do so he can, he, he can imitate his brother. His brother was red and hairy. Jacob was smooth. He, didn't, he wasn't a hairy guy. No, he wasn't. His father knew that. The mother knew exactly what to do to fool her husband. Because she taught Jacob she taught them how to cook. So she cooked it exactly how Esau would cook it. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? You know, I'll tell you something, brothers and sisters. I have a friend, he's a pastor. I haven't talked to him for 25 years because he's in Canada. Out of the blues, he called me one day. And he said, Carl, how you doing? I said, I'm doing good. He said, you know who's talking to you? I said, yeah, Pastor George Ali. <laughs> I recognize him by his voice. How could, Esau, how could Isaac, even though he recognized the voice of, of Jacob, still, he still think it was Esau because he felt his, his hand. You know, brothers and sisters, I look, at, I look at this from a very realistic and a very realistic point of view. You know, we had like a gold farm back in Trinidad. That's where I came from. I know how it is when you kill a goat, how the skin is, how, how the hair is. It's very tough. How could you feel that and say, this is a, it feels like, like Esau. I, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't understand. I just couldn't understand. He blesses Jacob. Esau 
To make a long story short, Jacob didn't, Esau didn't have got that blessing, but he cried out to his father. When he came with his Vincent, he cried out to his father, bless me, father, bless me. He felt, he felt the awful separation from his family, from his mother, from his father, when he was not being blessed. He think he was not a part of the family anymore because something was taken away from him, but he has already given that up. God has already taken that away from him because God sees the heart of a man. Amen. God told yes. Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. Yes. Yes. Before you were formed in the womb of your mother, I sanctified you. Yes. I set you apart for a special purpose. Amen. Amen. That applies to each and every one of you yes. this morning. Amen. Amen. We, were, we didn't came here by accident. Yes. No. You know, Rebecca was a very smart person. Very cunning, very smart. <laughs> One else said crooked. <laughs> I agree with you too. But the fact is, the, the, the fact is, brothers and sisters, that she, she played out so, so well to, to, uh, to Isaac. You know, she told Isaac, look, I am tired. I am tired of Esau's two wives. I know Esau have already violated the very fundamental principle of the family tradition when he married two heathen women, the Hittites woman from Canaan. He already violated that. And they were giving Rebecca a hard time. These heathen women, they were not easy. <laughs> because they come from a different culture, a different background. And they were giving her a hard time. So she went and told Isaac, she said, listen, I don't want my son Jacob to marry one of these Canaanite women. No, I don't. Isaac agreed with her because he remembered his father sent him to Rebecca family. So they decided that they would send Jacob here. To make a long story short, the Jacob journey to his uncle Laban was not an easy journey. It was not an easy journey. He fell asleep, but God was always with him, brothers and sisters. God was always with him. When you are faithful to God, God's going to be with you in hard times and rough times. One evening as he was traveling to go to his uncle, he fell asleep and he decided that he going to camp out right here. He fell asleep and he saw a gate was connected to earth to heaven. Amen. When he woke up, he realized that God is with him. Yes. <coughs> and that was a connection God was talking to him. That I'm going to be with you in spite of. Yes, you know the beauty about this when he arrived at his uncle. He met some shepherds at the well waiting to water the sheep. And what's interesting, he started to talk to these young men and inquire about Laban. And they told him, you know, Laban is a fine man. He's doing pretty good. He's very wealthy. And, and, and one of them says, as a matter of fact, look, his daughter is coming here. That's his daughter, Rachel. Is it possible? Is it possible you can see someone for the very first time in your life and felt that you could share your life with that person for the rest of your life? Is it possible? Yes. The very moment Jacob saw Rachel, that's how he felt. The very moment Rachel saw Isaac, that's how she felt. It was, it was a spontaneous love and affection combined. An irresistible feeling come across both of them. And he walked across to her and he told her, I am your cousin. I am Rebecca, your aunt, son. She took him home and she said, Do some lame and they ran, they ran and meet him, they hug him. And I'm telling you, it was a little family thing there. You know what amazing? 
as he began, as he got adjusted to the family, one day Laban came and he said, listen, I want you, he said, as a matter of fact, let me phrase that, he said, I don't want you to work for me for free. Because Laban realized that he, he was being blessed because of the very presence of Jacob. Yeah. His animals were growing mm -hmm. in abundance because of Jacob's presence. God was blessing Laban as a result of Jacob. And he, and he realized that. He acknowledged that. He said, listen, I don't want you to work for me for free. Tell me what, you, what it will be your wages. He said, listen, I don't want no money. Just give me some food as I work, but I will work for you for seven years for your daughter, Rachel. And that's what he did. He worked seven consecutive years. Just for racial. <laughs> Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Imagine at the wedding night, the honeymoon night, he found out. He found out that was not racial. You know, in the ancient days, brothers and sisters, respect and dignity was a part of your honeymoon. How could you, the reason why Jacob could not deserve or recognize Rachel is because of the fact that she still had all her clothes on. Her veil was still on. In all modern times, it's not like that. It's not. When you get married, everybody get buck naked and you do what you got to I remember when I got married. My wife told me to take the light off. I said, why you want the light off? I want to see what I'm doing. <laughs> it's, not like, it's not like back then. She had dignity. I had <laughs> But that was the custom back then. <laughs> when he, he, I mean, it, it, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. You woke up and you didn't see the woman you woke seven years for. You know, Rachel was very, very attractive. Stunningly attractive. On the other hand, Leah was not very attractive. She had some messed up eyes. No, that's what she had. A friend of mine, had he had married a woman with messed up eyes. In general, we call it Kofi eyes. It's the first time I ever come across one of that, and one day we were talking. I went home and we were talking. And after we, we, we sat at the table, we ate and everything, but well, every time he talked, she looks at me. Every time I talk, she looks at him. So after we went outside, me and he would walk outside, and before I went home, I said, hey, listen, man, you know, I, I, I think something, something not right. So he said, what's happened? I said, why when your wife talks, she looks at, she talking to me, she looks at you. And when she talks to you, she looks at me. And he started to laugh. <laughs> he said, I thought you knew. I said, no. <laughs> he said, oh, she got cookie eye. <laughs> that, that, that was the kind of, you know, and, and she was not very, she was not really, really attractive. <laughs> and here it is. Laban told him, listen, it, it's the custom of our people that the older should marry before the younger. But then why you promise me, Rachel, that I should work seven years for her, and then you give me something else? Laban, after the, the bridal ceremony, he eventually gave it to her after that. Give, so he still had us to work for seven years for her. Seven more years. Can you imagine working 14 consecutive years for the one you really love? It, it was not an easy thing, brother and sister. It was not an easy thing. Rachel was beautiful, but she was mean and vindictive. Well, well. That's who she was, her nature. I don't know if she was like that prior from being married, but that's how she become. She envied her sister Leah. Leah began to, to, to fertilize. She began to have children. On the other hand, Rachel couldn't. And she jealous, she jealous Leah as a result of that. This is the kind of, this is the kind of commotion, this is the kind of chaos among the family. When Rachel realized she couldn't have children, she gives she gives 
Jacob all made. Then she started having children for Jacob. When, when, when Leah stopped having children, what happened? She stopped, she gave him also her maid. So here with this, he ended up with four women with children. Four wives, four wives. Rachel still couldn't have children. So you, you can imagine the kind, of, the kind of tension that arises from that. And let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. I learned a lot when I was preparing this. That Jacob really did not love Re Leah. He did not. He despised her. He slept with her because, not in spite of. He slept with her probably when Rachel didn't feel like having fun with him. So he said, she sat him there. Leah, on the other hand, it's a whole hatred to watch her sister grew. And I'll tell you something, brothers and sisters. Those children were caught in the crossfire. They were caught in the crossfire. They saw the hate his father had for their mother. They saw the hate their father had for their maids that they slept with and have children. The male's children were despised. Even Leah's children were despised. Those boys grew up seeing all of that among their family. They saw that how Jacob had not loved their mother. And that created a hatred. And they bind it together like their mind have meshed into that. And they all see it the same way. When, when Joseph was born, uh, th that was a different story. That was a different story. Because Jacob showed all his love to that boy. Show all his love to that boy. Created more problems. The hate, the hate and jealousy for, jo for Joseph has increased tremendously. You know what makes it worse? Now you would see how Jacob had learned just about everything his mother had taught him. He, he was a centrist. He could have sold just about anything. Long ago, men never sold. They never knit. They never could do anything. Well, that was the job of a woman. But here it is. He made a coat. He made such a beautiful coat, and the reason why he could have done that is because of the fact that his mother taught him that. And it was a royal coat, a coat indicating that, that Joseph would be the heir to inherit the birthright of the family. Even though jo Jacob was 108 years old when Joseph was born. Can you imagine that? No wonder why I say I have my, have my, my beloved son at the, in my old age. <laughs> Joseph was a very, as he grew, he became a very formal, and committed and dedicated young, young man. Actually different from his brothers. Maybe the, maybe the environment and the condition this brother them grew up in maybe causes them to, to, to react and adopt this kind of violent and cruel and mean and vindictive behavior. But Joseph grew up and he was shown love both by his mother and his father. That the other kids never had, never experienced. That beautiful coat drove those boys crazy. It did. And here it is. On top of all of that, he began to get dreams that he would be superior and above them. Can you imagine that? Their hatred for him has gone to the extreme. That they have planned to kill him. They didn't, and nobody knows. But all this time the brothers and them were planning to get rid of him. 
You know, Jacob, on the other hand, realized that the brother never really associated with Joseph. So I couldn't understand. He had, he had so many slaves and, and, and maids in his commune. How come he couldn't send one of them to look, to look after the brothers? How come he just sent Joseph? I couldn't understand that. I couldn't. In those days, somebody gets you offside, they will snatch you and take you and sell you. You become a product. And the parents were taught the children that. You can't wander away like that. No, you can't. They will sell you. But here it is. He just, out of the blues in my mind, I'm thinking, maybe he wanted Joseph to know his brothers. Because he, he wanted him to know his brothers were there. You know, those boys were wicked. They were really wicked. They used to rape the girls, the bad girls. They used to rape them, beat them. The young men, they used to take advantage of them. They used to. That's how, and every time Joseph see these things happen, he would go and tell his father. They think he was a snitch in the family. Joseph was not a snitch. He felt sorry and compassionate for the people, for the, uh, the people his brothers and them abused. Not really a snitch. He was trying to help them that his father would intervene and talk to them. His father, his father, Jacob reached a point where he was really scared of his own children. When, when, when Dinah was raped, when Dinah was raped, Leah, two boys, Simon and Levi went down there, even though J Jacob agreed and the, and, and the whole little village agreed to become a heathen, a heathen community decided all the men to, to be circumcised just to marry his daughter. Can you imagine that? And these two men just went down there and killed all the men. <laughs> killed them all. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? They were, Joseph, Jacob had reached a point where he was really scared of them. And he felt maybe that deep down in his heart, maybe, you know, he sending Joseph with them to, to, to and maybe look, to see where they are so they could get friendly and he could, they could develop a relationship and, and things like that. But it was not so. It turned out to be the opposite. It turned out to be the opposite. When I saw him coming, when they saw him coming from a distance because they recognized him. When they saw him coming, they say, oh, here comes the dreamer. Mm -hmm. Here comes the dreamer. This is it. Mm -hmm. We're going to take him out. Mm -hmm. And that's what it did. That's what it did. You know, they began to, they, you know, they, they couldn't come to a decision how they would do this. They couldn't. They couldn't. Reuben said, you know what, why don't we just put him in a ditch and leave him there. Let he die off of starvation. Mm -hmm. Let he rot in there. Mm -hmm. But you know, Reuben realized that when they put him there, he would come back and take him back home. Right. He still had a good heart. Mm -hmm. Some Ishmaelites were coming down. They were going to Egypt to sell some stuff because they were trading, you know, and, and they were family, but probably they didn't know that. The Ishmaelites were Abraham's son. Mm -hmm. But we're talking about a hundred and something years gone by. So the Israelites were coming down and they were passing right by. And <coughs> Judah got up and said, he said, you know what? You know what? Let, we don't want his blood to be on our head. He should not have the right to the boot, to, to the boot right of the family. We have worked all our life to bring this family where it is. Why don't we just sell him? Why don't we just sell him to the Ishmaelites? And that's what they did. And that's what they did. They sold him. But I tell you something, brothers and sisters, when you have God in you, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. You have nothing to worry about. Wherever Joseph went, there was chaos, there were problems. The Israelites sold him to the captain, to the captain of Pharaoh God. Mm -hmm. He had authority and power. Yes, sir. 
You know, in the ancient days, these old men, these old rich men used to marry all these young girls to be their grandchildren. <laughs> Potiphar's wife probably was young as Joseph. And she was very beautiful, very attractive, because they don't look for, they don't look for all the girls to get married to. No, they don't. They look for the best and most beautiful. So it was not really, it, it was not really a one-side test with Joseph. Joseph was a handsome young man, stunningly handsome. But here it is. This young girl was attracted to him. It's not that Joseph did not attract to her. He had his temptation too. But you know, the Bible tells us that Joseph purposed in his heart that he will not sin against God. He will not do this thing against the man who, who put him in charge of all this stuff. He was a slave in Egypt. And to be a slave in Egypt and to have such authority and power and, 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 and in, in, your, in your master home, that was extraordinary. Because Potiphar saw there was something unique about this young man. And he gave him in charge of the whole, his whole household. Even his wife. Maybe his wife misunderstand him. <laughs> uh, maybe she did. And she thought maybe you in charge of me too. <laughs> you know, but the Bible tells us that when he did not submit to her, eventually she tried, she got him somewhere else and she, and she got him to spend two years in prison. Yes. She, he snatched, she snatched him one day, he left his coat on her, she, she, she made up a story, and she called the rest of the servant, look, this, he tried to rape me, this Hebrew boy, he in charge of all of us, and he tried to rape me, she gave that story to her husband, you know, deep down in his heart, I don't think Paul, if I believe that, he did not, if he had believed that, he would have executed Joseph. But he didn't. He put him among the king gods. I know. You know, when you have God in your heart, brothers and sisters, we have nothing to worry about. Absolutely nothing. Even though Joseph was in a different he was a, a slave in a different country. God was still guiding him and directing him. He was still maintained his faithfulness to God and his sincerity. He still observed the fundamental principle of living and being courteous and, and, and polite and kind and sympathetic to people. The, the, the guy that was in charge of the, of, of the prison, give him in charge of all the other prisoners. Can you imagine that? Huh? What? You giving a convict in charge of other convict, huh? Can that happen in our world today? Huh? Can that happen in our world today? I guess all those convicts will be loose. There's no joke about that. And that's what really happened. You know, things happen, and, and, and you might think it's a coincidence, but it's not. It's not a coincidence. God was, God was using the ulterior motive of his brothers yes. to reveal his plan yes. for Joseph. Amen. You know, there was a butler and there was a baker end up in prison with Joseph. They had a dream one time and Joseph came in one morning and he saw them very sad and he said, what happened? And you, you all were not like that? They said, we, uh, the, the, the butler said, oh, I had a bad dream. After Joseph interpreted the dream, he said, you'll be set free. The baker, on the other hand, he said, no, you, 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 in three days, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. when, the baker, when, the, when the butler was released, I'm making the story short. When the baker was released, I mean, when the butler was released, one day came, the Pharaoh, came, the Pharaoh had a dream too, a, a very puzzling dream. <laughs> I don't want to go into the details of the dream, but the fact is that the dream puzzled him. He dreamt two dreams. And it puzzled him. 
And he started to inquire from the, 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 the astrologers and the, the soothsayers and the whatever magician they had back then. And none of them couldn't interpret the dream. They couldn't. And then the, the, butler, the butler said, listen, I remember there was a Hebrew young man with us in prison. And I had a dream and, and, and the baker had a dream and he interpreted the dream and everything he said came true. They went and fetched Joseph. Are you ready for this? Hmm? Aren't you not glad you are seven day Adventist? Aren't you not glad that you are a child of the royal family of God? Are you not happy and proud that divinity runs through your veins? This is what I'm talking about, brothers and sisters. This is what I'm God, and what is what I'm talking about. We are the head and not the tail. Amen. 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 You be the tail because you choose to be there. Well. Look at Joseph from slavery. Brothers and sisters. When Joseph interpret the king dream and the king asked him about this seven day, seven years this and seven years that. He said that the first seven years will be plenteous. The second seven year there will be a famine. And he asked Joseph, well what do you suggest that we should do? And Joseph laid out a perfect plan. He said get Get certain men to oversee a certain number of people. Plant up the crop all over, in every city, in every state. And build bands so we could store all this food mm -hmm. for that seven years. Pharaoh said, well, can we find somebody like that? He couldn't find somebody. He suggested that Joseph be that person. Isn't God great? I wonder how Potiphar felt. I wonder how his wife felt. It's just two years after. It was just two years after. Joseph become the second man to Pharaoh. Pharaoh to give, take out his ring and put it on his finger, indicating that he's the second man to Pharaoh. <laughs> Pharaoh gave him charge of all his dominion. He said, the only, the only dominion you won't have is my throne. That's mine. I'm still over you, Joseph. I'm still over you. But you have everything else in your power. As the farming went by, brothers and sisters, as the farming went by and, and things getting hard around the region, the people around the region began to sell themselves just to get food, just to live. It hit Canaan so hard that, that Jacob found out that there's food in Egypt. He sent his son down there. You know, it's amazing, brothers and sisters. It's, it's really amazing. When Joseph went down there, he probably was about 17 years old. 17 years old. And the beauty of all this is that when they came to buy food, they met him. And he recognized them. Yes. There is not much changes in adult when you when you grow or when you're an adult. After 10 years, they couldn't recognize Joseph, they couldn't. He, he mastered their language because Joseph was a very intelligent person. Very, very intelligent. And he questioned them. He questioned them. 
Well, why are you down here? Why, 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 why are you down here? You come to spy on us, you know? It's like you're not going to, you know. He, he was testing them. He wanted to see who they really are, if they are still that wicked old man they were. And I said, no, we're from one family. My father had 12 sons. One is not, but we, there's 11 of us. I wonder how Joseph felt when they said that. Just, it's, it's unbelievable. It's, you know, brothers and sisters, it's, it's unbelievable. And he began to play with them. He started playing mind games with them. He bag up all the food and send them back home. When they reach home, what happened? They saw all the money in the in the in the food in, in the bags. He told them, "Listen, if because the, the, the way he questioned them, it was so technical. They couldn't they couldn't read him. They couldn't they couldn't hide anything. They they just answered the question to the point." Because they were looking for, for somebody to deceive them. And when they was going, he told them, listen, make sure if you're coming back, bring your last brother. Make sure your last brother come back. Otherwise, if he's not there with you all, don't come back. Yes, sir. Joseph, Jacob, on the other hand, didn't want to do that. No, he didn't. He said, no, I will not send my son. The other one had already died. How could I do this? You know, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You know, the rest of Jacob's children was not really respected as he respected and honored Joseph and Benjamin. Because in true and in fact, the woman that he married and the woman that he had his children with was really racial. That is the woman he loved. That is the woman he loved. If you have, as a man, you have children out there. My eldest brother had children out there. And sometimes they would come and visit him. And I said, you will give them some money. <laughs> but he won't. He won't. Sometimes he give them when my mother said, look, you need to give them some money. Huh? Like that, he would do it. But the feeling, the bond will not yet. The bond was not there. When you love someone and you have children with your wife that you marry, that you love, that becomes special to you. Those two boys hold that. Those two boys hold Jacob heart. That's why those boys grow up with that such a hate. Jacob realize that the only way for them to get more food is to send them back. Joseph approached his father and said, listen, we have to, we, we have, if you, is either we all die or you send this boy? That was Judah. So your father decided to send Judah. And here it is. They're all going down now. Eleven of them going down. Eleven of them going down. You know, the, 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 this is something, this is something unbelievable. This is something unbelievable. When, but when they approach, when they approach Joseph, and it was something else, when Joseph, when Joseph saw his brother, you could imagine the thrill, the excitement that would run through his veins to know that his brother, his last brother is alive. And he's been treated with respect and honor. Amen. You know, Joseph never forgave himself for what he had done. All these years, Jacob thought that he was responsible for the death of Joseph. All these years, he blamed himself. He cried day and night. His children, his son, saw that in Jacob. He become, he, he, he become wrapped up in his own self. For, for years, not weeks and months, for years he couldn't get back his mind together. He remembered the dreams that Joseph projected out. 
Remember the, 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 the faithful and sincere behavior and attitude of this young man. Remember how firm and stone he was, how faithful he was. He never lied, he always speak the truth. Joseph remembered that. In his mind, Jacob realized that this is the heir that will inherit the birthright of my family. Was he wrong? Was Jacob wrong? All these years he thought that he was wrong. All these years he, have, he, he was afflicted, agonizingly afflicted by the fact that his, he was the result <coughs> of a son, faithful, and number one son in life, a guy. When Joseph when Joseph saw his brother, he invited them home. He invited them home. They couldn't understand that. They, they, they began to think and reason to themselves. Why he's doing this? Why he's doing this? Why he's doing this? They couldn't understand. What have we done? But they, they couldn't understand. They couldn't understand why. And, and, and here it is, brothers and sisters. And here it is that that the food that he prepared for them was, 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 was such grand that it, it, it's unbelievable, like a banquet. Mm -hmm. And he allowed Benjamin to sit right next to him. And he had the most food. I don't know if he could have eaten all of that, but they put so much of food in front of him. It's like they, they actually saw what his father used to do to them. They were being even deprived. They were not treated equally. Even in that moment. That's something. You know, you know what amazing? You know what amazing? Is that after the beautiful banquet they had, he sent them back home. You know, while they were going, he, said, he told the, 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 the servants, he said, listen, put all the money back and put a special cup on. You know what happened? Put a special cup on. You ever have that cup? I'm going to say in Egypt. <laughs> Whoever had that cup in their bag, going to stay in Egypt. When they sourced the bag again, what happened? When they found that cup in who bag? Benjamin. Benjamin bag. They bring them back. I bring them back. And he said, all oh, what I have done for you guys. <laughs> Give you back your money the first time and send you back with free food to feed your whole family. You come back, all right? You bring your brother, which I requested. But here it is now. He stole from me. I give him the most food. I put him sit down right next to me on my right side. And here it is. He stole my cup. They know, they know. Benjamin knew he did not stole that cup. The brother brother them knew they did not. There was a setup. But what can they do? You are in the hands of Pharaoh, right hand. There's nothing, absolutely nothing. You know what amazing? He locked them up for three days. He locked them up in a room for three days, brothers and sisters. And every wrong thing those brothers had done, yes. it was discussed in yes. that room. Yes. It was discussed in detail because they began to sort their lives to see what they have done that is coming back to haunt them. Yes. What goes around comes around, yes. brothers and sisters. Yes. When the Bible says, does your sin shall find you out. Yes. Make sure you don't practice yes. it purposely. Yes. Yes. And if you're not sure, don't do it. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, yes. okay. every wrong thing they have done in their life came back to them vividly as if, as if it was yesterday. 
The Bible tells us that Joseph, the room he put them in, he, he was not too far from there. He heard them. Yes. The Bible said that he, he wept. Yes. His emotion went to the extreme that he could not control it. When he came back out, no wonder why the Bible tells us Judah is what? The line of Judah. Mm -hmm. Judah came back out. When he came back out, Judah approached. He approached Joseph and he said, listen, we have done many wrong things in our lives. We have beat people. We have killed people. We have disrespect people. We have crumpled on people. We have disrespect our father. We do things that we're not proud of. I saw my father take advantage of my mother. I saw my father love his wife and his children more than all of us. And that hatred grow in us. But in spite of all of that, in spite of all of that, Benjamin is going home. You can take us here for the rest of your life. We have wives and we have children. We have grandchildren. We have decided that we will stay. But I will not let my father go down in his old age to his grave like that anymore. They saw the affliction of his father, how he moaned after Joseph. They understood what it is to love a woman. They have come to their own reality, their own realization to understand what it is to marry someone that they love and have children. They told, Judah told Benjamin, Judah told Joseph, I don't know what's going to happen today, but what I do know, Benjamin is going back home. Benjamin is going back home. We're going to stay. The Bible tells us that Joseph could not control his emotion. He rubbed so loud that he walked out. He said, everybody out the room. He could not. Joseph realized that his brother that he knew, they're no longer that type of person. They're no longer that type of person. They realized that their life was nothing anymore. But the life of the brother, Benjamin, and the life of the father in the old days was more than anything else. They decided to give that up. Brothers and sisters, yeah. we may never know what tomorrow holds. Yeah. But what I do know, what holds right now, yeah. is making that full decision to follow the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ with all your heart. Amen. After Joseph revealed himself mm. to them, you could imagine the thrill, the excitement, the joy, the contentment, the satisfaction that radiates and flashes through their mind and into the veins they couldn't hold. But deep down in the hearts of these young men, deep down in the hearts of, of these men, his brother, they were still scared that they were still scared because of what they have done to him. Right. They were still scared. Joseph tell them, don't worry. It was the blessing of God that I am here. Yes. It's the blessings of God I am here. People are not dying because I am here. Amen. The world is being fed because of me. God has put me among the heathen so that the name of God can be exalted. Amen. 
Yes. The power of God can be seen. Yes. The faithfulness of God can be seen yes. in the lives yes. of his people. Amen. The Hebrew will look down on. But here it is in Egypt. In Egypt, the God of Yahweh was exalted. Amen. The God of Jehovah was exalted. The Lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. The Son of God, the Creator, and the Redeemer of the world has been exalted above Amen. all of the gods. Amen. When Jacob realized that the Son is alive, yes. you can imagine, you can imagine the contentment all the agonizing pain that he felt all these years, even to that very moment, because he couldn't forget it. He said, my oldest son is dead. You going to take the other one? You going to take Benjamin? What's going to leave with me? That's an indication the other children were, was really meant nothing to him. When he, when Joseph, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's something I try to imagine, but my mind cannot stretch that. I try to imagine when, when, when Jacob arrived in, in Egypt, when he saw all these chariots and soldiers march up to Canaan to take him down. Yes. <laughs> that is a child of God. Amen. That is a king of kings. Joseph, Jacob rode down in Egypt as the promised child. Amen. The one that holds the birthright to Isaac. Can you imagine that? Brothers and sisters, we're going home. We're going home. Amen. Like it or not, I'm going home. Amen. I hope you are. Amen. There come a time in our life. This world will no longer be here. Right. Adam and Eve are still in the grave. We know Enoch is not. We know Moses is not. We know that Elijah is not. When Jesus Christ boasts the clouds of heaven, brothers and sisters, that would be the great family reunion I'm talking about. Where the saints of God will come together. Where the dead in Christ shall raise first. Those that are alive will be changed from mortal to immortality. When we usher into heaven, angels will fold their wings. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the whole vast universe will give the redeemed their undivided attention because we will sing the song of victory. Amen. Nobody else will. Amen. You ready? Are you ready for this? Yes. Are you want to be there? Yes. Yeah. You got to give up everything, brothers and sisters. Yes. We got to give up everything. Amen. Everything that will hinder us Amen. from preventing the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We have to kneel down and we got to bruise our knees. We got to walk with the Lord continually, constantly, every moment in our lives. We should have a dialogue with God, with Jesus Christ. God is calling us today. Egypt was revolutionized. They have seen the God of the Hebrews, the true and the living God, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, and the God of Jacob. 
There were no doubt in their mind. The world need us. The world need us. Yes. You want your brothers and sisters out there to be saved, don't you? Yes. You want them to go to heaven, don't you? You want them to walk the streets of gold and the sea of glass. Yeah. You want them to experience what you are experiencing in this dark and sinful world, don't you? Yeah. The only way, brothers and sisters, we can do this is by making a total commitment and surrender our will to the will of God. Let Jesus Christ reign in our hearts. Let the Holy Spirit connect us to Jesus. And let Jesus connect us to the Father. Are you ready for this? May God bless us, brothers and sisters. As we ponder upon the faithfulness of Joseph. What he had accomplished in life because of his faithfulness. He had bring his family together. As no other family had ever brought together. Sometimes I think I'm, I belong to a dysfunctional family. But I thank God we can see the difference. When you have God in your life, you bring people together. You bring people together. People who hate you. People who despise you. People who reject you. People who said all kind of mind and thing about you. When you have God in your heart, you can't hate, brothers and sisters. You can't, you can't hate. You can't. You can't say bad things about nobody. Because that's not the nature of God. All that comes out of your mouth is love. Yes. Love. Thank you. Amen.